collective sense of pride in themselves and in their unit. Watching this model company perform, observers were amazed to see how quickly and efficiently the troops could be massed and maneuvered into different battle formations. Later, members of this model company were assigned throughout the regular army to teach drill. It was through this simple emphasis on drill that the effectiveness and efficiency of Washington's Continental Army was improved. In 1789, Baron von Steuben wrote an American Army's first field manual, the regulations for the order and discipline of the troops of the United States. The drill procedures placed into effect at Valley Forge were not changed for over 85 years, and many of these same procedures are still in use today. The reviewing party, the playing of the national anthem, and the playing of the Air Force song. Second, we ask that you remain silent during these times, reflecting on the price that has been paid for our freedom. Third, we ask that you pay respect to the flag during the national anthem, and as it passes during the review. Military members in uniform should stand at attention and render a salute. Civilians and military members not in uniform should stand and place their right hand over their heart. And it's physics of the future. Those of you who had a chance to read it, you'll recognize the value of reading about future technology. And while that's all interesting and cool to know about the technology of the future over the next 100 years, the final chapter is of most importance to me, and it talks about how that technology will affect our lives, and indeed, many of these airmen that are out on this field today. Let me read to you real quick one paragraph from the book because it talks directly to leadership. Leadership will also be prized commodity in the future. In part, leadership consists of sizing up all the available information, viewpoints, and options, and then choosing the most appropriate one, consistent with certain goals. Leadership becomes especially complicated because it deals with inspiring and providing guidance to humans who have their own personal strengths and weaknesses. All of these factors require a sophisticated understanding of human nature that is beyond the ability of any computer, now or in the future. What the author is asserting is leadership will transcend technology and time. It's a, it's a valuable gift that we're all going to have to use, particularly in your career field that you're in. I also uh, pulled my second point from a different source. It arrived in the mail in my office on Tuesday, timely, if you will, and it deals with national leadership. It's unsolicited. It came from a person in Belgium, somebody I've never even met, never even heard of, but they decided they just wanted to reach out and connect to me for some reason. And I want to share it with you. General Clark, I am British with dual Belgian nationality, born and raised in Belgium. My father was a private in the Royal Army Service Corps and a veteran of World War II, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, and Italy. He died when I was seven. My mother is Belgian. I am now 65 and a retired chief inspector after 35 years with the Brussels District Police. I contact you in friendship to renew our special relationship found upon our shared history, our shared values, and I believe our shared futures. I grew up in the 1960s as America, led by President Kennedy, looked to the heavens and saw not an endless void of the unknown, but a new frontier to dare, to discover, and to explore. People said it couldn't be done, but America did it. And 20 years later, in the 1980s, America, led by President Reagan, refused to accept the fate of millions trapped behind the Iron Curtain, and insisted instead that the people of Eastern Europe should be allowed to join the ranks of nations which live safe, strong, and free. People said that it would never happen in our lifetime, but it did, and the Berlin Wall was torn down brick by brick. So early in my life, I came to understand that America is not just an indispensable nation, it is also an irrepressible nation. 
Throughout the whole century, the American people stood liberty's ground, not just in one world war, but two. Cemetery after cemetery across Europe honors the memory of American soldiers resting row upon row, often alongside comrades in arms from Britain. In the hardest days of the last century, faith in the future kept America alive. And I will tell you that America kept faith in the future alive for the rest of the world. Almost every family in Britain has a tie that binds them to America. So I want you to know that whenever a young American soldier or Marine, sailor or airman is killed in conflict anywhere in the world, we the people of Britain grieve with you. Wow, that spoke to me a lot about national leadership. My hope for all of you is that your leadership is indispensable in the future and your commitment is irrepressible as well. Good luck. God bless. The first Mustang flight is led by Second Lieutenant Jeffrey Ratowski from the Wisconsin Air National Guard. Robert Thomas and Colonel Cogator, we want to congratulate the class on a successful completion. We wish them continued success as they embark on their Air Force careers. This concludes today's graduation ceremony. You may now join the graduates on the parade field. Please take this time to collect any personal belongings so they are not left behind.